toxic workplace and toxic bosses, toxic people that you work with, other employees, whatever it is, and get some tips on how to survive the toxic workplace. My name is Lise Colucci, and I am here to help you understand and heal form and transform your life after toxic people have been in it. So toxic workplace, what are some signs of a toxic workplace or a toxic boss? So let's just go through a list of some of the signs of a toxic workplace and some explanation about it. Someone stealing the credit all the time. Someone you do things, they take the credit. You, they might avoid all accountability. A narcissist or a toxic person is not going to take accountability for the things that they do when they make mistakes or when there are confusions or when there's miscommunication. They're not going to take accountability for it. If they do take some level of accountability for it, they will then shift the blame onto someone else eventually. They demand attention from the group, from you. They're pulling your attention away from what you're doing. They're pulling your attention toward them versus toward the project or whatever it is you're working on. It's basically like they're using work as a place to seek and, and, and attain supply. People who are narcissistic or toxic in the workplace often like to gossip a lot and spread information and rumors about other people, sharing people's private information with others. That can happen with not toxic people as well because, you know, you get groups of people together and they talk. But in the case of looking for lots of signs and lots of indications that something might be toxic in the workplace, that's going to be one of them. Toxic people, narcissists in particular, are not going to react well to any negative feedback or anything they deemed criticism. So they're going to get shut down. They're going to get angry. They're going to deny. They're going to get reactive in ways that are equally negative to what I just described. So it's not like you can say, hey, let's figure this out. There's a problem here. So it doesn't matter how you approach it. They're still going to have a negative reaction to being what they consider criticized. Toxic people in the workplace. Oh, they love to shame you. They love to set up situations so you look inadequate so that then they can talk about how inadequate you are in ways that maybe are subtle or maybe not so subtle. I mean, I've heard of one really narcissistic person and his favorite phrase to say to his employees or anyone he saw as beneath him in the in the chain of command was I'm incredibly disappointed in you. Like in you, not just I'm incredibly disappointed, I'm incredibly disappointed in you. How could you do it? How, I, th I thought better of you. That kind of shaming in the workplace, like a stern, angry father, not such a great thing. Okay, sometimes narcissistic people in the workplace love to use charm and charisma to get their way and control things. They may be complete emotional babies when it comes to a thousand things in the workplace, and then they know how to charm their way right back up to the top and charm their way into positions that they're not equipped to handle. Or even if they are equipped to handle them, they can charm their way into getting there. In other words, people overlook the bad stuff because of the charm. Narcissistic people in general tend to think that there's one standard for you and another standard for them. Um, right they tend to have this double standard thing going anyway in the workplace it can come across like someone who's above the rules or who has their own set of rules that they play by and everyone else is supposed to have the rules that everyone else has right so being above the rules being outside the rules having their own rules for how things should function in the workplace another thing narcissists and other toxic people do in the workplace is passive aggressiveness. So they may criticize, as an example, something, and then give platitude. So critical, 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 blah, 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 you did this, you're doing that, I don't like the way this is going about, you know, you really ought to that. And then, I was just kidding, oh, come on, I was just being, I was just having a, you know, I was just having fun with you, you know, just throwing that, um, critique, criticism mixed with a lightheartedness and jokey attitude about it as if it wasn't real that throws you into a state of cognitive dissonance about it because you're thinking, well, that was mean, wasn't it? I guess it was bad, but was it bad? You know, it, it leaves you confused. It leaves you conflicted and it's super distracting and awful to deal with in the workplace. They will often seek constant approval and 
constant praise, oftentimes they will interrupt constantly to interject their own view of things, to interject themselves and steal all the attention and supply back toward themselves that they need for the day. So you think when you've got a toxic person in your house and they go to work that, that they're not toxic? Well, guess what? <laughs> they're just stealing supply from everyone in the workplace while they're away from you at home. They tend to bully, they tend to be jealous, they tend to have this air and feeling of nothing's ever enough. In fact, I'll even say, okay, that's great. Now we need more, you know, more, 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 which isn't just to help productivity. It completely diminishes the feeling of morale in people because they feel like there's never enough. Nothing's ever good enough. And you're always walking on eggshells in the workplace to try and meet the expectations of the narcissistic person, especially if they're your boss. They will often triangulate like most narcissistic people do, and they will pull somebody else into the equation of whatever it is they're dealing with so that they have someone they're aligned with against you, right? Or they'll pull you in to align against someone else. And it's that way they can escape all accountability and they can escape any finger pointing that they're doing anything wrong because they have witness. They will often leave you out of the communication loop and then leave you hanging so that you don't have enough information to get the job done, which then leaves you in a state of not being able to complete your job or do your job well without having the information that you should have had. So you could do it well. And another thing they might do is blame shift and basically scapegoat you. Most times, most of the times, narcissists in the workplace are, are operating the way they would in a family, right? So they'll have, if there's enough employees, they'll have favorite employees, which are the golden ch children, so to speak. And then they'll have the ones they scapegoat. They'll have the ones that they dismiss and ignore. And they'll have the ones that they are trying to get the attention of, the sort of lost child that drifts away and they can pull back. Sort of plays out similarly to the way it can in family settings. What do you do about all this? What do you do when you're in a situation where you can't leave your job? Because the obvious answer is get another job, right? Get away from those toxic people, find something where the work environment is healthy. And right, that would be the obvious, but we can't always do that. We can't always just jump ship and go find something else right away. Or if maybe we don't choose to, maybe it's what we really love doing. And the only thing we don't like is that toxic person there. So. These are choices we make for our own life or, or situations that we have to learn to navigate. But what do you do in the meantime? So basically staying calm, recognizing you do not have to attach much significance to this narcissistic person other than to get the job done. You need to separate yourself, just like in all situations where you have a narcissist you can't get away from or a toxic person or situation you can't get away from and recognize that that you're not one thing okay and don't let them pull you into the drama don't let them pull you with all of these manipulation techniques that they're using to get you to respond to them and react to them and instead just do your job stay out of the gossip stay out of the triangulation game stay away from anything that you feel is pulling you toward them that is unnecessary to get the job done. Stick with your task at hand. Set clear boundaries with that toxic person from the beginning. And if it's too late, start baby stepping your way back into a more boundary filled relationship with them in the workplace. And one thing about boundaries I wanna say here is having clarity about what it is that you have the energy for, the willingness to do, the willingness to not do right what it, whatever it is have it come from a place of knowing that that is a clear line for you if you're just setting a boundary from your head i don't want to i won't allow this just from your head without coming into your body and really noticing that that is something i'm super clear about mm -hmm. and that line going up then has a different feeling to it and narcissists are reading you okay and so if they read that feeling as a clearer boundary there's more of a chance that they'll just go somewhere else in the workplace and try and make trouble somewhere else we can't eradicate the behavior we can only sort of not respond to it not react to it and this is one way and so when you're setting clear boundaries the next thing would be learn to gray rock really, really well, and then learn to yellow rock in there. So you're not always going to be stony cold and, you know, almost distant to the point of unprofessional. What you want to do most of the time is blend in some of the 
more yellow rock, so to speak, which is the niceties and the, the polite professional friendliness. Okay, not let's be my friend, let's be buddies, but polite and professional and, you know, respectful in within a kind way that suits the work situation to your particular work situation and then move your attention somewhere else and go back to work. Don't stay in the moment of lingering with the narcissist where you feel them pulling your energy. Oh, look over there. Got to go do that. Okay, busy. I'll see you later. Right? Don't go out to lunch with them. Don't take private invitations if you can avoid it. If you do need to go to a function because it really like if you don't go, it could affect your your abilities at work or whatever. Make sure you can bring someone one on one with the toxic person is just going to that's what's going to create the triangulation later on that's what's going to create them hooking on you thinking you're a really good source of supply at work Just address the toxic things that are happening as calmly as you can. If you have an HR person that you are addressing it with be calm and clear and concise about the behaviors if you get super emotional and super reactive people start seeing you and saying to you you know what you're the problem most of the time in the workplace often the narcissist knows how to charm the people that they need to charm so that if you come in reactive then you look like the one with the issue if you come in calm and say wow that this is going on and this is not something that serves the workplace or whatever it is however you want to say it it, it can be met a lot better on a professional level okay being neutral as you can and I know it's hard this is all difficult stuff because you're dealing with a difficult person in the workplace being as neutral as you can. To sort of neutralize the situation again with the gray rocking and keeping it super dull and super boring so that their attention seeking is not placed on you. If you need any more or you want to add to this. Let me know in the comments if you've worked with toxic people and what that was like for you. It's um, it's difficult. Been there and <laughs> don't wish it on anyone. So yeah, if you need help with anything, coaching, group coaching, or peer support, check out the information in the main description of every video. And otherwise, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.